If you don't know already, I've been selling these 3D printed cases for Raspberry Pis online for a few years now. With the launch of a number of NVMe hats for the Pi 5's PCIe port, I get asked quite a lot which hat is best for it and which case to choose. So in today's video, I set out to find out. These hats have a few common features, so let's have a look at those first. They all connect to the Pi 5 through an impedance controlled ribbon cable at the back of the Pi, and then either sit on top of or underneath it. They feature an M.2 M key port that the drive plugs into, and although the Pi supplies power to them directly through the ribbon cable, they often have an option for an external power source as well. To accommodate these hats, I've got two case designs. One which takes the Pineberry hat drive top, and another which takes the Pi Moroni NVMe base, or the Pineberry hat drive bottom. In terms of which physical layout is best, I have a preference for the top mounted hat, but there are also lots of benefits to the bottom mount as well. The top mount allows you to fit a Pi 5 active cooler in between the hat and the Pi, so that takes care of cooling the Pi, and you've then got the drive at the top. This leaves you plenty of room to add a heatsink to the drive, and it actually stays reasonably cool without a heatsink just because it isn't boxed in underneath another board. It's also really quick and easy to swap out the drive for a different one if you're switching operating systems or storage. The drawbacks of the top mounted drive are that the Pineberry version is limited to a more compact 2230 and 2242 size drive. These are a little bit less common and more expensive. You also don't have access to the Pi CPU to put a larger cooler like an ice tower onto it, and it blocks some of the GPI opens. The bottom mount has the NVMe drive underneath the Pi, which means you can now access all of the GPI opens and add a larger cooler on top of the CPU. You also now have the ability to use 2280 size drives, and in the case of the Pi Moroni NVMe base, 2260 drives as well. The drawbacks of the bottom mount are that the NVMe drive is covered and is in a relatively small space, so it does get quite hot. You're also limited in options for a heatsink, since it has to be very compact. As someone who experiments quite a bit with different operating systems, I find having to disassemble the stack to get to the drive the biggest drawback, and the main reason why I prefer the top mounted hat. So that's a bit of an overview of the physical differences and the pros and cons. I'd say that if you tend to need to swap drives around often, then you'd probably prefer the top mounted hat. But if you're happy to install a drive and leave it in place long term, then the bottom mount is probably the more versatile option. For performance testing, I'm going to be testing three different boards. First up is the Pineberry hat drive. The hat drive top and bottom have the same onboard components and circuitry, it's just a different layout, so I'll use the hat drive top for testing, and the results will be a representation of both. Next is the Pi NVMe base. This offers a wider range of drive size options than the hat drive, but only comes in a bottom mount variant. Lastly, we've got the Geekworm X1001 NVMe shield. You don't get any additional PCB for your money with this board. They've really kept it as compact as possible, but similar to the Pi base, it supports four different drive sizes, but in this case it's a top mount hat. In terms of cost, from the manufacturer's official websites converted to US dollars and excluding shipping, the hat drive top costs 21 US dollars, and the bottom variant is a bit more costing 24 dollars. The Pomeroni NVMe base is a bit cheaper at only 14 dollars, and the Geekworm X1001 is a dollar more than the Pomeroni hat at 15 dollars. So Pineberry's boards are a fair bit more expensive than the other two. Next let's look at the performance of each hat. For this I'm going to use the same Raspberry Pi with an active cooler installed. And I'll use the same NVMe drive for each test, which I'll just swap between the hats. I'm using a Sabrent Rocket 4, as this drive is listed as officially supported on all of the hats product pages. It's also known to be a reliable and fast drive. It's probably a little overkill, as it's a Gen 4 drive and the Pi only supports up to Gen 3. But at least we'll know that the drive isn't the bottleneck. I'm using a 2230 size drive so that it's compatible with all of the hats since the Pineberry hat drive top only supports 2230 and 2242 size drives. To test performance, I'm going to be using James Chambers' Pi Benchmark script. This benchmark favours better random read-write performance, but is a much better representation of how the drive would typically be used as an OS drive, rather than just reading and writing single large files to it. This benchmark will also run on SBCs running most Linux distributions, so you can try it out on your setup as well. 
As I mentioned earlier, the Pi only supports PCI Express Gen 3, but this is not supported by default, so we'll need to modify the Pi's config file to enable it. We just need to add this line to the end of the config file and then reboot the Pi. Let's start with testing the Pineberry hat drive top. With the Pi rebooted, we can obviously see our NVMe drive. Running the benchmark is as simple as copying one line into your terminal and hitting enter. I ran the test three times and got the following average results, with an average total score of 60,011. Next up is the Pi NVMe base. Running the same script three times, I get the following average results, with an average total score of a fractionally lower 59,875. Lastly, I tested the Geekworm X1001 hat. I got the following average results, with an average total score of 59,950. Looking at the combined results, they all perform quite similarly, with almost all the results being within 1% of each other, and most within half a percent. The only result which was outside of this was the disk write speed, which was within 3%. This had the Pineberry hat drive being the fastest, and the Geekworm X1001 being the slowest. This is not all that surprising, since the NVMe controller is physically located on the NVMe drive, which we're swapping between the hats. These types of hats with a single M.2 port are actually quite simple, and most of the onboard components are for power to the drive and the status LED circuitry. There could have also been design issues like incorrect impedance matching, and this may have affected the results, so it was worthwhile doing the test to demonstrate that we're getting similar results from each of them. So I guess the results mean that the most significant considerations in making a decision between them are the cost and whether to go with a top or bottom mount hat. From our hands-on experience with all three of these boards, the Pineberry hat and the Pimeroni hat seem to be better quality than the Geekworm one. So the Pimeroni one is the best value for money. So go with that one if you're happy with a bottom mount hat. If you want a top mount hat, then decide whether you value the lower price of the Geekworm one in favour for slightly better performance, or the quality of the Pineberry hat. Let me know which hat you prefer, or if there's some other drives you'd like to see me test with them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials and reviews.